Chinese President Xi Jinping travels to Central Asia. He's visiting Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. We'll discuss China's ties with these two countries. Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu, and this is The Heat. In his first stop in Central Asia, President Xi arrived in Kazakhstan on Wednesday. The Chinese president was welcomed by Kazakh President Kasim Jomat Tokayev at the airport in the capital, Nur Sultan. The two leaders held talks on bilateral ties and economic and trade cooperation. President Xi is now in Uzbekistan for a state visit and to attend the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit. For more, let's bring in our panel. Joining us from New York is Rachel Ziemba. She's the founder of Ziemba Insights and is a geoeconomic and country risk expert. From Bethesda, Maryland, Anara Tabisha Levdieva is an associate professor of history at Marshall University. From Kazakhstan, Yezhan Saltibayev is the director of the Institute of World Economy and Politics and an expert on geopolitics and international security. And Aina Tangan is a senior fellow with the Taihe Institute in Beijing. Thank you, everyone, for being with us. Aina Tangan, let me start with you. This is President Xi Jinping's first foreign visit since the outbreak of the pandemic. He was welcomed, as I said, uh, in Kazakhstan by the Kazakh president, Tokayev, in Nur Sultan, the capital. The two leaders reportedly have already held discussions on transport, logistics and agriculture. How significant is this visit uh, for President Xi? And what can you tell us about the growing relationship between these two countries? Well, Kazakhstan was where uh, she announced the Belt and Road Initiative uh, in 2013. So obviously, it's a, a key part of this network that uh, China is pushing. But overall, what it really represents is uh, China's turns towards regionalism. If you look at what's been happening with RCEP, with ASEAN, uh, also uh, with everything uh, with the stands, you'll see quite clearly that China is looking to preserve peace and open its um, economic borders up uh, to its neighbors. And you, uh, you can expect to see more of that at the SCO. And as you point out, uh, this was where the Belt and Road Initiative was announced in 2013. But what can we read into the fact that this was the country that President Xi chose to be the first one he visits after the outbreak of the pandemic? Well, uh, quite, you know, as I said, this is a nod towards regionalism. He's showing quite clearly that uh, he's concerned about uh, where China is with its neighbors as opposed to uh, making a trip to the United States or Europe, Europe or someplace like that. Uh, it's, it's really about where China believes it needs to be strong. Um, and as I said, that's right now Global South, ASEAN, and the stands. Mr. Saltibayev, uh, prior to this visit, President Xi wrote an article in a Kazakh newspaper, and in that article, he praised relations between the two countries. The Chinese leader called the two countries, quote, good neighbors, loyal friends, and reliable partners. What does this relationship mean, both economic and strategic, for Kazakhstan? Well, thank you very much for the question. Uh, Kazakhstan is actively participate in the Chinese initiative of Belt and Road. As our colleague just mentioned, uh, Belt and Road was in, uh, initiated in the capital of Kazakhstan just seven years ago in 2013. So now it's unites nice about 40, 140 countries of the world with the population of 60% of the world's population. So it's quite a big initiative and Kazakhstan is um, ready to, was ready from the very beginning to join it. Right now, we um, I have to know that we are realizing 52 joint projects with China worth more than 27 billion, some which have already been implemented. About 20 of them are energy, finance, agricultural industry, one third is the first related to the heavy industries. So this, the first visit of the Chinese leader abroad since the pandemic, uh, it is also noteworthy that Kazakhstan is in the third place by the number of Xi Jinping's visits. More often, Xi visits only Russia eight times and the United States four, four visits. And with the current trip, Kazakhstan is on par, let's say, with the U.S. and already share the second place in the number of visits of the leader of China. So these all facts confirm that China pays special attention to partnership with Kazakhstan. The most important thing here is that we're a mutually beneficial partnership our countries are strengthening the economies and ensuring security in this in region. 
So China and Kazakhstan have always adhered to the principle of mutual trust and respect. And as the Chinese leader points out in his article published in Kazakh newspaper, uh, in 30 years of diplomatic relations, we have managed to build a worthy example of good neighborly relations. Uh, it may also be recalled that in 2019, a declaration of eternal cooperation and strategic partnership development was signed between Kazakhstan and China, which opened up a new horizons for the interaction between our two countries. Uh, when it comes to the uh, to economics, China is one of the largest foreign trade partners of Kazakhstan, but share in total trade turnover uh, in 21 reached almost 25 percent. According to official estimates uh, of Kazakhstan uh, sites, uh, the volume of bilateral trade last year amounted to more than 18 billion. In January and July of this year, the mutual trade uh, exceeded similar indicators of the period uh, of the previous year uh, by almost 40 percent. So if such growth dynamics and trade continue until the end of the year, China, I think, will be the first uh, in the first place in the list of Kazakhstan foreign trade partners. Uh, I also would like to mention that China is an important source of investments and new technologies to the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, according to our national bank, um, uh, China ranks the uh, fourth largest investor to the economy, 20, more than 21 uh, billion USD. Um, uh, after Netherlands, US, and Switzerland. Uh, moreover, uh, half of the 40 billion of all Chinese investments to Central Asia also belongs to Kazakhstan. Uh, Kazakhstan also pays special attention to the uh, humanitarian experts, uh, aspects of cooperation. It is important right. to know that China. Yeah. There are many things to mention here. Yes, uh, China is a very important player in, in the region and for Kazakhstan's vital partner. Okay, Rachel, we've just been listening to those figures there that Mr. Saltibayev has been talking mm -hmm. about in the economic and trade relationship between the two countries. Bilateral trade between these two countries was worth 21 billion in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, they're also working, as we heard, on about 55 projects, which include a wind farm, an auto assembly line, mm -hmm. and the modernization of a refinery. So put this in perspective for us. How important is the relationship and where do you see it going? Sure. So the relationship, is, as Mr. Saltibayev mentioned, is, is, is very important um, and arguably has become, may become more important at a time when uh, Kazakhstan has really been struggling to um, access uh, some of its export networks via sort of the Caspian pipeline. It's been somewhat more constrained by some of the Russian uh, maintenance on the on the pipeline. And it's also coming at a time when Kazakhstan is restarting its plan to list state-owned investments um, and just sort of via IPOs. And while they aren't only looking to China for investment, uh, China's historically been a large, a large investor. Um, and that, I think, is, is, is really part and parcel of Kazakhstan looking to sort of keep options open between Russia and China, also keep, uh, keep other trade relationships and investment ones, say, with the Gulf uh, open. But ultimately, I think this SCO trip more broadly, I think, is going to put more attention on not only China's relationship in the broader region, but also Russia's. Many of the countries are trying to keep their options open, maintain ties um, with everyone. But increasingly, as export controls and sanctions tighten uh, in the region and, and the like, that's going, there may be choices that, for example, uh, Russia uh, forces countries in the region to, to play. I, I thought it was quite important also, uh, the, the timing um, and the statements we heard earlier today from President Xi, highlighting the commitment to what China sees as territorial integrity of, of Kazakhstan. There are many questions what what, what threats those would be, but ultimately remembering what happened at the beginning of this year in Kazakhstan, the regional support that provided um, stabilization, I think that was an important statement from Xi Jinping, as well as just the historic nature of the longstanding trends, but also Xi Jinping's decision to visit Central Asia as his first foreign trip. Right, Anara, welcome to the show. As we just heard from Rachel, uh, Kazakhstan when it wants to keep its options open uh, as far as both China and Russia are concerned. It is a country which borders both Russia and China. It declared its independence in 1991, but it does maintain very close relations with Moscow. Um, as China and Russia improve relations with Kazakhstan, uh, what kinds of 
opportunities do you see this presenting for the countries of Central Asia, like Kazakhstan? I think that the current visit is extremely important for whole Central Asian region, not only Kazakhstan. And it is uh, uh, very important to see that Xi Jinping highlighted Kazakhstan as the most successful uh, partner in, the, uh, in Central Asia. And Kazakhstan is the largest uh, uh, economy right now, the most successful economy. And uh, the situation is very, very different right now. First of all, I would like to emphasize four moments. It's a geopolitical situation changed drastically uh, with the Putin's war in uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, Kazakh leader uh, Tokayev uh, openly challenged uh, and uh, uh, discussed this issue publicly. And then the second moment is that economy. Economy is recovering after COVID, and there are certain uh, new uh, realignment because the two largest partners of Kazakhstan, Russia and China, and with the new geopolitical situation, uh, that um, new factors emerged. And uh, then uh, both uh, uh, China and uh, Kazakhstan should uh, consider their Western sanctions relate, uh, related to the, uh, the Russia's war. And the third moment is that internal stability and instability in uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, because of a leadership change, it's a natural that more uh, uh, we see in Kazakh, uh, 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 in Kazakh society more actors who would like to participate in uh, uh, decision making, and it's uh, of course challenging. We can talk more about this uh, uh, war in Ukraine and how this destabilized uh, post Soviet uh, space. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know we were talking about the Belt and Road Initiative a moment ago, um, and since that initiative was launched in Kazakhstan in 2013, it set in motion a whole series of. Uh, Economic and ties with uh, developing countries, but if we look at Afghanistan, uh, if we look at Kazakhstan, it's become an international transit hub right now. How did Chinese investment in the country help make that happen? Well, you know, earlier you mentioned three different investments: a wind farm, uh, a refinery, and then a factory. And that's really the story of the Belt and Road. I mean, they're help helping uh, Kazakhstan uh, develop its oil. Uh, business, which allows it to make money. But the future is uh, dependent on having alternative fuel sources. That's the wind farm. And the promise of the Belt and Road is about not um, just, you know, China using uh, Kazakhstan and this Central Asia as a transit hub, but also to start moving uh, factories, jobs, uh, economic prosperity to the region around China. Remember, China's uh, idea behind this is this kind of mutually uh, sustainable uh, economic uh, stability, which uh, they want to spread through the regions, not just in, in Central Asia, but also in Southeast Asia. And they're more than willing to do it in Africa and South America. You know, if you start looking at the map, you see a, a very clear uh, kind of chasm opening up between the north uh, developed, northern developed countries and the global south. Uh, the emerging and developing countries uh, who have both the kind of same political idea that they want to avoid taking sides, but they want to concentrate on their economic uh, development. More of our coverage of President Xi's visit to Central Asia right after this. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat. I see a country on the move. There is my opportunity. Is it good to change so fast? Yes, but it's a challenge. We have one foot in the future. But we never forget our past. We need to talk to one another. And listen. More than a billion voices telling their stories. 
Rediscovering China, only on CGTN. On CGTN. No war. No one again. He can hold him. Gun. Gun. Don't believe this is a word. about your life at that no. particular time? Not at all. What is your assessment of the state of the continent today? Africa has the potential to pie itself. Excuse me. GTN, China Global Television Network. Welcome back to The Heat. We're discussing President Xi's trip to Central Asia with state visits this week in Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Let's get back to our panel. Mr. Saltibayev, uh, the Kazakh ambassador to China, Shakrat Nurishev, uh, he was uh, interviewed by CGTN, and during that interview he told us that the two countries are discussing the opening of a third railway crossing between the two countries. Let's listen to some of what he had to say. Trade continues to grow between the two countries. Last year alone, more than 20 million tons of goods were transported by railways between Kazakhstan and China. And in the context of the surge in the number of China Euro freight train service, 51% of the railroad container traffic in Kazakhstan is currently carried out via the China Euro freight train. The opening of a third railway crossing on the border is of great significance, which will help transport goods between China and Europe. Faster. So, Mr. Saltibayev, once this line is up and running, um, what kind of opportunities would it present for the expansion of trade for Kazakhstan? Well, it is obvious that mutual trade between our countries has enormous potential. And China's trade turnover, both with Kazakhstan as with all Central Asia, will only grow in the future. Uh, statistics uh, show that over the past 30 years, trade between Central Asia and China has already grown more than 100 times. And this is far from the limit. Uh, in particular, speaking at the China plus Central Asia Summit, uh, C5 uh, C plus one, uh, in January this year, uh, President Xi Jinping said that China will seek to bring trade with the region to 70 billion by 2030. Uh, this is also supported by the fact that our economies uh, complement, if you will, to each other. China has a well-developed manufacturing industry, high-tech industry, produces a very wide range of consumer goods. For its part, China's growing economy needs energy, metals, minerals, as well as quality agricultural products. For example, according to our experts, today Kazakhstan is able to increase export to China for more than um, 130 items, including organic foods and more than, for more than 1 billion USD. In turn, in order for the mutual trade to reach a new level and maintain a high pace, the necessary for infrastructure uh, is growing. So uh, there are five uh, road checkpoints and two railroad checkpoints between Kazakhstan and China right now, which have resumed full operation after the pandemic. Uh, however, it is clear that the capacity uh, of the current transportation infrastructure will eventually reach to its limits. Uh, therefore, the task of opening a new railway checkpoints here looks as a very urgent task. 
Uh, another factor that requires the expansion of transportational links between the two countries is related to the geoeconomic map of Eurasia, which is undergoing a fundamental changes right now. So against the backdrop of the Ukrainian conflict and the impact of the uh, ongoing pandemic, international supply and production chains and logistics schemes in general are being uh, revised. Uh, a large scale orientation of transport flows is underway according to available data Shippers from China are already suspending some transit to the EU via Russia, uh, fearing sanctionaries. Uh, in this context, uh, the development of uh, Trans-Caspian route becomes extremely uh, important. Uh, and here it is important to understand that the work of the transit corridor is aimed primarily at the service of cargo traffic between China and Europe. Uh, the fact that Trans-Caspian route gets uh, a new breath and becomes an important alternative to transit route uh, through Russia is confirmed by statistics. In first quarter of 21, less than 16,000 containers passed through uh, Trans uh, Caspian route. In first quarter of this year, there were 19 and a half uh, thousand units registered. Uh, so, given that the delivery of goods from China to EU by Kazakhstan is much safer and more stable, as well as on average three, four days faster than if they were delivered by Russia or Mongolia, uh, it is clear that the volume of transit traffic will also grow in the future. Uh, and for its part, Kazakhstan is seriously interested in making full use uh, of these emerging opportunities and becoming a transport and transit hub of uh, regional and maybe global significance. Rachel, one other issue I want to look at, and that mm -hmm. is energy. And of course, you know, mm -hmm. energy has become a very big issue around the world. Countries are looking for stable sources of energy. Uh, we've seen what happened with Europe when uh, Russia mm -hmm. turned off the taps, the energy taps to Europe. What role would that uh, kind of country like Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, of course, is a major producer of energy. What role can Kazakhstan play when we look at the very uneven uh, energy supply uh, sources around the world right now? Sure. So Kazakhstan has an important role to play. What's happening right now is a real attempt to reshape and reorient uh, flows of particularly fossil fuels around the world. Um, and some of this, so we've seen a reallocation of LNG flows that were going to Asia, countries like China now going to Europe uh, as the prices have increased. Um, and that's really leading to massive cost to consumers and businesses and, and really, you know, raising concerns of what will happen over the winter and in the future. So Kazakhstan does have a role to play both by continuing to supply its largest buyer, China, but also indirectly um, onto other dynamics. Now, I mentioned earlier that one of the challenges Kazakhstan has faced was first a sanctions threat about its oil that went through the Caspian pipeline along with Russian fuel um, because the, the Russian supplies were subject to sanctions. And then there was the maintenance issue. Some of that has been resolved. But for Kazakhstan, I also think we might well see more um, fuel by rail and the like. Now, the other aspect of energy we haven't talked about is nuclear, right? And Kazakhstan, already large supplier of uranium and inputs there. And that's something that could expand, particularly as we're seeing European countries, developed Asian countries and others really say, well, maybe it was too premature to shut down our um, nuclear power uh, plants. So I think we continue to see, of course, China and other countries adding capacity and Kazakhstan's resource more generally across energy, not only fossil fuels, is going to be an important uh, element and area for moving up the value chain and, and the like. Anara, there are also security concerns in Central Asia. There are challenges to security in that part of the world from extremist groups, some of whom are based in Afghanistan. What kind of cooperation do you see between Kazakhstan, Russia, and China to counter this threat? Uh, that's a very good question. The uh, threat from Afghanistan constantly united, uh, periodically united Central Asian countries and Russia. And now we can see the new situation when it's a very real threat, especially for Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, who they are neighbors. And uh, I think that uh, the Shanghai Security Organization uh, may address somehow to these uh, uh, concerns, but there's, there are so many uh, problems might be related to their insecurity in Afghanistan. It, I hope that all five countries can 
discuss because situation is totally different if we compare to the what was before this year with the weaker role of uh, uh, Moscow we can see more sovereignty more independence uh, in Central Asia and a stronger ties with uh, China okay um... Mr. Saltabayev, President, in, in terms of security uh, in the region, uh, President Xi has also offered an expansion of cooperation regarding, uh, and he pointed uh, three things out, oh, well, more than three things actually, four things, law enforcement, intelligence, defense, and data security. What can you tell us about this? Well, uh, obviously, China and Afghanistan share some uh, common security threats and concerns. And I think main of this concern uh, and the center of the focus of our attention is Afghanistan, obviously. So the security in Afghanistan is uh, not um, stable. It's not on the level that we expected. Uh, so uh, Taliban is actually not fulfilling its um, obligations or promises to keep the security in Afghanistan and stability uh, in general. So uh, right now we see that the situation is continuing to deteriorate uh, because like uh, according to UN, mm -hmm. more than half of the country's population, about 24 million, in need of uh, immediate humanitarian aid, among them 90 million people severely in severe food insecurity and 6 million are at risk of starvation. Uh, so um, as the cold weather as winter in Central Asia, which is very harsh, according to the scale of Afghanistan's humanitarian crisis could worsen dramatically. So we need more cooperation between law enforcement agencies uh, and between uh, security agencies of both right. uh, China and Central Asian countries with regard to Afghanistan. What concerning the data and yeah. uh, other uh, forms of cooperation, I think that China is number one uh, country in the world in terms of the 5G network. Yeah. It's a uh, number one country of artificial intelligence. Uh, so in all these spheres, in all these dimensions, China could provide a very interesting opportunities for all uh, neighboring countries. Uh, so Kedersen is among them. So we already um, partnered with China in terms of developing our network of 5G in Kazakhstan. So I think it will be important in the future for Kazakhstan to uh, transfer technologies from China rather than just buying uh, hardware. So I think it will be a very interesting development in, in our relations. But let's see in the future what will happen. Okay, and that's where we have to leave it. Thanks to all of you for being with us. That's all the time we have. I'm Arnold Nidum in Washington, D.C. Thank you for watching. Sixty degree profile.